All right, dinner's ready. All right. There you go. Oh, come on, really? You're not going to eat? This is the third time. Why are you so finicky? Why can't I just get you to eat? My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content. Getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. So a lot of us have been there, including myself, where it's such a frustrating thing and it can be scary and it can be concerning when you have a snake that just won't eat. And again, it's just one of those frustrating things where like you thaw out a rodent every single week and you try offering it up and your snake just kind of looks at it and then they just kind of go the other way. Or their body language in general just shows complete disinterest and I mean it just breaks your heart because you're like, I just want to get you to eat, I just want to have a healthy, happy snake, what's going on? And that's what I want to help with today is helping with tips and tricks and potential reasons why your snake is not eating. And the first thing I want to say just at the beginning of this video as well, and I'm going to go over it in depth later too, is if you are seeing drastic weight loss in your animal as well as if you're seeing any other health concerns whatsoever there's probably more underlying issues that are causing your snake not to eat so definitely consulting a reptile vet is essential now a good amount of you may be like me where you own ball pythons like this guy right here and ball pythons are notorious absolutely notorious for going off food and being finicky eaters it's super frustrating but there are tips and tricks that I'm going to display as well as that you can use for any type of snake to help combat picky eaters. Isn't that right, buddy? This guy actually right here, my super passed out lesser male, he was one that was very notorious of going off of food and I mean, going on hunger strikes for weeks, if not months. And I mean, he honestly went on a hunger strike that was eight months long. And I mean, kept great weight and everything like that, but I mean, they're just notorious for going off of food. It's super frustrating, I feel for you guys. And if you do have any questions concerning this or anything like that, or if you had any other tips and tricks that you want to suggest, please leave them down below in the comments section. We're all trying to help each other out here, so let's do the best for our animals here. But let me kick this video off and tell you a couple reasons why your snake could be off of food. All right, so first thing I want to start with right off the bat is, is your snake a brand new addition to your home? So I'm talking like, has this snake been with you for like a couple weeks now and you're just not seeing the snake interested in food or it looks stressed out? Because it's actually not an uncommon thing for a new snake to actually show no interest in food. So what I suggest doing is setting up the animal, letting it get acquainted with everything, letting it get comfortable and getting used to everything and its habitat and its enclosure and it's going from there. Now that could be a process that could be like a week and a half to two weeks before I would suggest even offering food. Normally when I used to work at a pet store, I would normally offer and suggest probably two weeks before you even offer food to the animal. Keeping up with basic care for the animal, but avoiding handling it is crucial because you want that animal to get as comfortable as possible where it's living before it starts getting reacclimated with people and everything like that and getting used to you. But that's normally a top reason why the snake isn't eating. That's a brand new snake because they could be eating perfectly fine at a pet store or like with a breeder and they're well established there. But then when they're thrown into a new situation, it's completely different to them and foreign to them. So they have to get reaccustomed and everything like that. So patience is key for that. Patience is key for all of this, honestly. Next thing that could cause a snake from going off of food is bad husbandry. So even if something is slightly off in your husbandry, like the heat, or if there's not enough hides in the enclosure, if something just isn't right in the enclosure, like humidity, that's going to be another crucial thing too. So making sure everything is up to quality in your snake's habitat, that's going to be another crucial thing that I would say double check, triple check, make sure everything is up to par. Now going back to husbandry and going back to like more specifically the hides, hides you normally see people kind of get like bigger hides because they know that their snake is going to grow a lot larger. So instead of buying two hides, normally they'll buy like one big one to let the snake grow into which normally sometimes isn't a bad thing. I mean, you're just trying to be economical, but at the same time, it could be causing issues for your animal. Where snakes in general, they like tight spaces where they can hide in because they feel more secure. So if they're in something that's a hide that's kind of more spaced and everything like that, and they're hiding in there, it could actually, believe it or not, be causing them stress. So in that case, what can you do? Well, you have two options with this. I would say the first option would be you can buy a smaller hide, see if that works out for them. I mean, that could be the simple kicker right there that everything is totally fine 
behind your husbandry, but maybe they're just kind of wanting something that's a little bit more of a tight space for them. So that could be a simple fix. The other idea too is, is like if you don't want to buy that second hide, you can always bunch up like paper towel or newspaper or something like that and put it inside the hide just to kind of make it a little bit smaller of a space and kind of fill that space up a little bit. And that could be something as a potential solution for this issue. Now, another huge issue is, I mean, if you've had a snake for a while, or I mean, if it's a brand new snake, is the snake going through a shed cycle? So like if it's in the initial stages of a shed cycle, or if you're seeing it kind of blue out with the eyes or like kind of turn dull, those could be potential signs that your snake is about to shed. So in those cases, I've seen snakes that have gone off of food until they're done shedding and finishing that cycle because they just don't want to do anything and they kind of do their own thing and just kind of chill inside their hide. And normally I have snakes that you don't see until after their shed cycle and then they become active again and more interested in food. So waiting until the shed cycle is over is something that I would recommend doing. Normally right after they shed out, normally they become more interested in food. So that's a good time that I would offer food. So another thing too that could come into play with this is age of the snake. So if this snake is not an older snake that's more established and everything like that, and it's more so like a hatchling that's only had a couple meals inside them, that could be something that you wanna be looking out for. Now when I'm talking about like a more established snake, I'm talking about like a six month old snake and older, but like if we're talking about like a newly hatched snake, those snakes don't have many meals inside them, so they don't have the capability to go months without eating. It's not something that is recommended because they can lose weight a lot quicker than a snake that's more established. But if it's more established, like I said, I've seen snakes like this guy right here go on hunger strikes for eight months plus. I mean, I've seen a snake go 12 months without eating. It's not an unheard of thing. It can be concerning in some cases. You just have to watch the weight loss of the animal as well as any other health signs that are becoming a concern. If any of that happens, again, consult a reptile vet immediately. So now another thing that could come into play too is actually where you are from. So what does that mean? So if you go through like colder spells or like colder periods of time where you experience a winter, if you have like seasonal changes in general, that could come into play as well too, where these snakes will actually experience time where they they realize that it's getting colder so they'll kind of wean off of food and you'll see less and less of a feeding response because of that. So that's not an unheard of thing as well too where some snakes actually go through what's called a brumation period which essentially means a hibernation period. They'll store up all the calories beforehand because they know that this cold spells are coming and the seasons are changing and then they'll save that up and normally they'll become more interested in the spring to get back on food. So yeah seasonal changes that's something also to consider as well too. And lastly, the last thing that could be causing this is nothing. It just could be a hunger strike. Now, that's not an unheard of thing. I've experienced it many of times. It's a frustrating thing, that's for sure. It's especially prominent in ball pythons where they are well known to go off of food for weeks, if not months. You can find a whole bunch of different forums where you'll just see question after question of, help, I need help with my snake. He's not eating, what's going on? What kind of species is it? A ball python, there you go. But it's not unheard of in other species as well too. It's just something you wanna keep an eye out for. But as long as you're checking the other things too and everything else is looking up to par, it's just a waiting game at that point. It's frustrating, I know. Okay, so those are potential reasons why your snake could be going off of food, but what are ways to combat it? What are tips and tricks? So I'm gonna go off of a list of different ideas. Like I said, if you have any other suggestions that aren't listed, please, by all means, leave them down below. We're all here trying to help each other out. And it's always cool to learn different tips and tricks too that work for you guys as well too. As long as they're safe and feasible for the animal, that's all that matters. So the first thing I would suggest is a dry prey item versus a wet prey item. What are you offering as a frozen thought option? So in terms of that, if you're offering a damp rodent, that could be an issue where they're just not interested in that. Believe it or not, they can be as picky as that too. So maybe drying the rodent under like a heat lamp or a heating pad or something of the sort there, but not a blow dryer because that can actually cook the animal. So you don't want to do that to dry off the animal, but trying to find a different way to thaw the animal so it's either dry or wet. Like for me, what I personally do to thaw my rodents is I actually put them in a Ziploc bag and then I fill that bucket with actually warm water. So then they sit in there and then I just kind of twist the bag over so they're getting on both sides of the warmth. Sometimes the bags will leak and there'll be water inside them, but for me personally, thankfully, I've had no issue with them getting damp rodents. Some people have had less luck with that where their snake just doesn't prefer that. So thawing them in a different way with like a heating pad or like a heating lamp could be a better option, but don't use a blow dryer. And going off of like warming up the rodent and everything like that, what I normally do too, if they're kind of picky, 
and if like the rodents have been thawing for a while and I'm just checking up on them, normally what I'll do is I'll actually take that bag out, dump the water, and then put in brand new water and just do a really quick one minute reheat. And that normally will do the trick just so it reheats and it gets them up to a perfect temperature and they're really getting enticed to go after that prey item and really have that feeding response. Now going off of pickiness, I mean snakes could actually also be picky about the fur color of the rodent. I'm actually curious to see a test about this and everything like that. I've never experienced this also personally. I've seen and heard about this, but I've never experienced this. It's very interesting to me hearing about this over the years. So if you guys have run into this issue, tell me more about it down in the comments because I'm wanting to learn more about that. It's kind of weird, but maybe changing it up a little bit may not hurt. And another option that may be difficult to some people is offering a fresh killed rodent. So what does that mean essentially? It means buying a non-frozen live rodent and then freshly killing it yourself right before you offer it to your snake. So it's one of those difficult things. A lot of people really have trouble with that and I can totally understand why. I mean, as an animal lover myself, it's really difficult to do those things sometimes, but it's kind of one of those things where you gotta do what you have to do to get the snake to eat so hopefully that's a trick that'll work but if you do that and it doesn't work i mean at least it can't go to waste because you can always freeze the rodent and try again another time and there's a whole bunch of different ways to properly kill a rodent to offer it up to your snake so look into those as well too so like i said too i used to actually work at a pet store myself so what we had at the pet store were hamsters didn't feed the hamsters off but what we actually did if someone came in with a finicky snake or if i had a finicky snake or if there's a finicky snake at the store what I would normally suggest doing is getting used hamster bedding. So normally like where the hamster was like laying or probably wherever the hamster was, just going to a pet store, if they have hamsters, gerbils, whatever, and asking the sales associate, can I have a clump of used hamster bedding? And what that's going to essentially do is after you've thawed out the rodent and then you pat it with this bedding, it's going to scent it. And it's going to give it a really, really strong scent where it may entice your snake to eat. And then normally after one successful attempt at that, it will kickstart their feeding response again and then you can move on from there. But it's not uncommon that you have to do it maybe a couple times too. So that's a good suggestion as well too that I would try if it's something that you're able to do going to a pet store. It's not a weird thing, believe it or not. I've had people come in and actually ask for that as well too. So don't feel weird going in there and asking for that. If you have a good pet store, they'll be understanding and they can help you out. Now this is an important one too. So listen closely to this. It has to be frozen thawed. But what you can try doing too, leave the frozen thawed rodent in the enclosure overnight. So a couple different things you can do here is just kind of straight up leave it in the enclosure. If you have a heat mat in there, normally putting it right on top of the heat mat, like on the bedding and everything like that, leaving it there overnight so it stays consistently at a warmer temperature, that's what I would do and just kind of leave the snake be. Because being left alone, being more active at night and being nocturnal while you're asleep and everything like that, the snake could actually be more enticed to be eating rather than when you're around dangling it off of tongs. It's something that's worked in the past definitely something I would try out but you do not want to do that with a live rodent because I have heard horror stories in the past and I've actually seen casualties unfortunately due to this where you leave the live rodent in the cage overnight and you come in the next morning and the snake is half eaten these rats these mice they do have strong long teeth and they also do have claws it's one of those things where it can cause a gnarly bite if not fatal to your animal so please do not leave a live rodent in your enclosure overnight definitely do it only with a frozen thawed rodent and try different things with a frozen thawed so leaving it under a hide or like above the heat pad or even if you had like a small box or something like that that you can kind of put in the enclosure and then just kind of put the rodent inside there so going off of the privacy aspect even if you left like the rodent inside there and like put a towel or like a shirt over the enclosure sometimes the snake doesn't want to actually eat in front of you i've actually had that issue with this guy here it's not really an issue but like which is understandable they don't want to be stared at while they're eating so definitely try using Using one of those tactics to see if giving the snake more privacy works out. So another tip I would suggest with your picky snake is changing the time that you offer the food item to your snake. So what I mean is if you feed them during the day maybe try feeding them at night because the snake is normally more active at night so doing that and enticing them when they're more active may entice the feeding response. And if it doesn't work just leave it in overnight and see what happens. So as a later resort if nothing is working whatsoever I would definitely consider trying a live prey item. As heartbreaking as it may be I mean your snake has to eat at the end of the day you can't let the snake starve. So offering a live prey item may be a final resort for your snake with your supervision. So you do have to be there and you have to make sure that the snake is grabbing the rodent and this rodent is not attacking your snake until you're fully sure that that rodent 
has passed on. Like I said, I've seen just small bites turn into huge infections in snakes if they're left untreated. So you want to make sure that your snake is safe in the whole situation. As heartbreaking as it is, you want to make sure that you're doing what's best for your animal. And this is another thing too with ball pythons along with other species of snakes as well. If it is a hatchling, normally those snakes right out of the egg will not take a frozen thawed meal. So I've had to do it in the past too when breeding them and it's one of those really hard things like I said. But starting with a live prey item is something that you may have to consistently do, at least until they're more established. And then you can start offering different tactics to wean them over to frozen thawed meals. And like I said earlier, if you've tried a few of these tips and you're still not having success whatsoever with a feeding response and your snake is losing weight or showing any other health concerns, definitely want to consult a reptile vet. Because what a reptile vet's going to do is they're going to make sure there's not any underlying issues with your animal like parasites or any sort of issue like that as well as they could resort to doing something that I would say also is an absolute last resort option if you're an inexperienced keeper and you're experienced in doing this and you're comfortable in doing this which is force feeding. So force feeding normally what it is is it's going to be a, normally a smaller prey item than what you normally offer but what you do is it's trying to kickstart their feeding response so you're slowly, slowly forcing a rodent down the snake's throat, not fully pushing this rodent down the snake's throat and not forcibly doing that either because you could actually hurt the snake as well as you can harm its teeth as well too in the process, but just slowly and gradually pushing the mouth open and pushing the head into the neck area of the rodent down the snake's throat. Then after you do that and then when you let go, normally the snake will pick up on the response and it will start eating it. Sometimes they'll spit it out and then you have to retry. Normally they'll start picking up the response and then they'll start eating the prey item right then and there. So that's always a good sign. So normally you just kind of kickstart it and then they'll do the rest of the work. But I would say that's an absolute last resort done by experienced keepers and done by experienced vets that can do these kind of processes because you don't want to just shove a rodent down your snake's throat because that can cause harm. So definitely don't recommend that if you're not comfortable in doing that or if you don't have the knowledge on how to do it properly because that can be dangerous. And then you're looking at a whole bunch of different issues on your hands. Now keep in mind too, like I said earlier, keeping in mind the age of your animal and how established they are. So if it's like a hatchling and they're not established and they haven't eaten that many meals, that's going to be something that's going to be more concerning and you definitely want to consult a vet earlier. But if it's more of an established snake and they've had a whole bunch of meals, that's going to be a snake that you don't have to worry if they do miss a meal or if they go weeks if not months without eating. But if you're following things like I stated before and you're also monitoring and making sure your snake's health isn't declining or your snake isn't losing any weight. If you're not seeing any of those concerns, well then maybe that's kind of in a relief where you can be like, okay, maybe I don't have to worry about this and it's going to be like a hunger strike or something like that. So always keep that in mind that it isn't the end of the world if your snake doesn't eat, if they're more established. So just monitoring and patience is key. But I hope this video helped you guys out. If you do have any other suggestions, please, like I said before, leave them down below so we can help each other out and help the animals out as well too. I'm sorry that this has happened to you guys and that you've had to resort to watching this video. I mean, I know it's something that's completely frustrating and you just want answers, but it's not always black and white. So you just gotta dig a little bit deeper and see what the underlying issue is. And that's what we're trying to do and trying to help you out and trying to help your animal out. Also too, make sure you share this video with anyone that is also having problems and issues with picky eaters. That way we can help them as well too. So we're just trying to get the word out. We're trying to help as many people as possible. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you could do me a couple of favors, if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. As well as definitely check me out on my social media. I'm always posting cool things there as well as hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hopefully we can get your snake back on track with a better feeding response. And until next time, I will see you guys soon.